Good morning, everyone. We had a really nice sort of wild camp spot. Uh, it was free right behind this little welcome center right here. And uh, had nice hot showers in the van last night, which was good because it's kind of chilly around here. Got the toilet cleaned up, all the chores done, ready to get on the road. A lot of driving again today. And we took the back route. We didn't go the main road. We didn't want to backtrack backtrack on roads that we traveled before. And it just so happens that we're going on one of Brazil's most infamous motorcycle roads. This is Rostro da Serpentine, or Road of the Snake. And it's 476, and you can see this place is just covered in all sorts of stickers from travelers and mostly motorcycles. Now, if you guys know anything about famous motorcycle roads and the name Serpentine suggests, these are curvy roads. And so curvy, windy roads, it's been raining, it's been misting, not the best conditions to be doing something like this. We've got a lot of driving to do today, but we're going through the last bits of the beautiful Atlantic forest here in Brazil that we will see. And I should say that there's a lot of wildlife in this region. Tapirs, capybaras, all sorts of cool birds, all sorts of interesting culture. I'm really bummed we don't have more time to explore this region. And for that matter, many more regions in Brazil. It's just such a huge country. We really, really, really needed more time here. But we're about to get on the road. You guys can see what it kind of looks like around here. Yeah, we'll check you on the road. we've showed all this before but one of our favorite things about traveling in a van the way we travel instead of just flying into a certain destination and looking at the areas right around it is when we get to drive from one location to the next this is about a three-day drive we're on yesterday was more big roads and going through a lot of the mid-sized cities here in Brazil but today we woke up and we get to drive on this amazing road. Now even though it's foggy and misty, the views are still beautiful. We're passing little rivers, little farms scattered out amongst these beautiful mountains. Going through a bunch of small little towns. Uh, it's just one of the cool parts about the way we travel. We're passing the bananas and we even just passed a vineyard. Well, we don't know if they make wine there, but they definitely were growing grapes. So I think we have a few more hours of this kind of area. So we'll just keep an eye out and kind of try to share some of this, this part of the adventure with you guys. We just crossed another state line. We have left the state of Sao Paulo and entered the state of Paraná. I think we may do that again before this long three-day drive is over. Leave part and I enter another state. Santa Catalina. Yes, that's where we're headed. Back to the coast. We've climbed up to the top of some of these mountains. There's a lot of up and down on this, but we're definitely at a pretty high point because we are way up in the clouds. And when we get a little glimpse through the trees off the side of this road, we can see down deep into some valleys and it sure is beautiful. But it also makes you take a little bit of a deep breath because it's a little ways down. Kurt's getting an arm workout today on this curvy road, but it's worth it, right? Yeah, it would be really, really cool if this fog had lift. We know on the other side there's some stunning views we're missing. But this little piece right here is a beautiful drive.
he's 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 taking care of it while so he's good. Okay. Okay. All right. Here you want to film Ciao, it. Fideo. All right. So we uh, we came around the corner, saw the semi stopped to make sure everybody was okay. We have used our translator app. He is okay. He is just here watching the vehicle, waiting on it. Sounds like the tow truck. So hopefully everybody was okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, Ciao. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> We just passed something pretty interesting. We were driving down the road through a small little town and Kurt looks up and sees this huge thing. Looked like a giant power lines from a distance going from the top of one mountain to the other. But as we got closer, it was clear. It was much bigger than power lines, but it was in the fog. So it took us a little while to realize that it was a huge giant conveyor belt. And as we got a little farther into the city, we saw that there was a huge cement plant. So it looks like somewhere up in these mountains, they have found a place to mine the materials you need to make concrete. And they put them on these giant conveyor belts. And it looks like it goes several miles. They're suspended yeah, in the it air. Is insane. It is crazy. I've never seen anything and like that. And then it. it comes down from the mountain and it crosses right over the main road and dumps right into the cement plant. And I have never seen a conveyor belt system like that. And I'm sorry we are dorking out on that, but if you do not know, that is what me and Kurt both did in our past lives with civil construction. So when we see something cool like that, we're going to share it with you. We just have to because we're road construction nerds. But that was really cool how they moved that material from the mountains to the plant. Coming through an area of this mountain region that is definitely heavily timber region. You can just look out over these mountains and see miles and miles of planted pine trees. And you can also see them in many different ages, new trees, old trees teenager trees and then you can also see bare land where they've come through and and harvested all of the timber now as hard as it is to see stripped land like that as much as we love nature one thing i do have to point out is even though they're stripping sections of land here you can see that they come in right behind that and replant the land now of course that's just to keep the harvesting going but we have gone through regions of Latin America where they strip the land and then just haul butt and vacate and leave it that way. So this looks like a maintained, managed, long-term harvesting system where they do seem to still care about the environment and do the best they can. So good job to the timber people here in this part of Brazil. So we have gotten to the other end of the snake road. Should start to get a little straighter now. And there was a little gas station deli, a lanchoneta. What do you got there, Curdy? Uh, I don't know what these things are called. We I mean, call I, them teardrops. Teardrops. <laughs> I know what they are. Cachicas, cachacas, or something like that. But it's made, I think, with that tapioca flour on the outside. Mostly there's chicken inside, and sometimes there's a little cheese inside of there. But the chicken is seasoned up and spiced up, so these things are super tasty. Is it a chicken one? Frango? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It was very hard to understand the very nice lady in there, but I thought I was getting Frango. Good morning. From the campsite we made it to after our marathon long drive yesterday. And if you want to know if driving six and a half hours was worth it, look at our front yard for the next few days. What do you think about this place, Kurt? It'll work. Get some work done. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a full service campground. We can plug in. It's off season, so there's not many folks here. But the plan for this campsite is to be able to see the ocean, hear the waves, relax, edit a couple of videos a piece, because as always, we're behind. But first things first, we got to walk a few blocks to the grocery store because we're out of food. So. Let's go see about this little town, what kind of grocery store we can find. Come back, have some lunch, and get to work. But don't worry, while we're here, we're gonna show you this beautiful beach behind us. It's early, so the sun's not all the way up yet. 
The weather says we've got a pretty clear day coming. We'll see. Not a bad place to camp for a few days, huh, guys? Listen to the crash of those waves. They put us to sleep the past couple of nights. I don't know about you guys, but when I can hear waves crashing, I sleep like a baby. Wow, cuántos años? Four, cuatro años. Yes. Wow, it's beautiful. It's he or she? Hey. It's a boy or girl? Boy, boy. Wow. Yeah, he, he has a little fur, a little bit. You, you like to get your chin rubbed, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I love it. This is Sphinx. ¿Qué es tu nombre? Anderson. Hey, tu esposa? Aline. Aline, with the Brazil. <laughs> so you've had this for dois años? Dois dias. Dois dias. Do, solo dois dias. Yes. Wow. Let me see. Oh, cos, cos, cocinar. Cocinar. Ah, refrigerator. Look at that. I use our mines. Ah, perfecto. Our mines. See. Fogão. Fogon, uh, gasolina, or I mean, uh, propane? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Ah, nice. Yes. Look at that. Wow. Solo dos dias. Solar. Para que se like see in here? Yes. <laughs> wow. And they have a little Sphinx cat, too. Ah. So. One bed at key and one bed at key? Yes. <laughs> and you have room for your clothes. Air conditionado. Uh, Risk free air. So ah, climatizador. Yes. Climatizador. Climatizador. Yes. I love it. And up here he's got the batteries and more storage. He can plug it in. Look at that. Wow, that is really cool. What the quest though? Foi eh, 35, como é que fala? 13, eh, 35. Good morning. From a campground on the coast of Brazil, we made it back to the beach. It's still not season, so you can see this nice, big, very comfortable campground is almost empty. Got a van back in the corner and a camper right there with the family in it. A little playground for the kids. But I'm about to reveal the best part of this place. It's got a sitting area and some showers. Little kitchen area, but look at that. The view out our window was the beautiful, beautiful ocean. Stayed here a couple of days and just relaxed. Didn't do much. Edited some videos. Listened to the waves. Walked on this beautiful beach. But it's time to hit the road. We're southbound. And go find some more beaches. And remember, we're looking for a place that in eight or ten years we might could come back to live. Who knows? Today we're heading to another beachfront campsite. About an hour south of where we were last night. On the way, we had to drive you through one of Brazil's famous beaches where many, many, many of you guys have told us in the comments that we needed to go. The problem is, it is a very developed area, so it has the parking of a big, giant city, which makes it very hard for the van and for finding a good camp spot on the beach. Now, we could have found one in town, but we like to stay right on the beach, guys, if possible. But we did want to drive down the beach, give you guys a look at it, at it. Some people have called this the Dubai of Brazil. I cannot pronounce the name. I'm putting it on the screen right now. It is a beautiful beach and it looks like it is a place you could go stay in one of these apartments, condos, or hotels and have a really, really good time. 
one thing we saw for the first time, which I know it's probably all over Brazil, but it's the first time we've seen it. Instead of volleyball on the beaches, it was pickleball, wasn't it, Curdy? Yeah. The all of our ball, the pickle phenomenon is going worldwide. It is. It's down here in Brazil too. We know all of our friends up in the states love and play pickleball, and they do down here on this beach too. But now we're headed a little bit more south to our campsite that should be right on the beach and not quite so crowded. We have made it to our next campsite. I'll wait until you see this beautiful beach. <laughs> That's our parking spot. And look at that view. Giant, huge crashing waves. A gate with a walkway for us straight out to the sand. We got beautiful sandy beaches, rocks on the end. Not a super crowded party popular beach, more of a relaxing beach, not a swimming beach. The waves are definitely too big and dangerous for that. But that makes a beautiful sound and a beautiful view. Look at those blue waters. Right next door, a restaurant. So we're gonna have some afternoon coffee. Obrigada. Gloomy weather here at our campsite on this beautiful beach, but it did rain long enough to get our two little fur monsters out for a little walk around the campsite. But I think I felt a sprinkle or two. Time to get back in our van. 
Good morning everyone. I gotta be honest with you. It's real easy in life to take for granted the things that are around you. And we've been bouncing along these beaches here in Brazil. And after a while, you kind of start to think of, well, is this a beautiful beach or not? And to be honest with you, the rocks are there. It's been misty and rainy, but the big waves come crashing down. It's a place where you can play and you can just enjoy and relax and it's beautiful and it's simple beauty that I hope you can find in your own backyard because I'm sure it's there we find it in everybody's backyard but in any event we are about to leave this beach and go to another one and we woke up this morning and they're out here setting up uh, the volleyball nets and honestly these guys might be professional they're practicing they got the net all regulation and they are these guys are good anyway we're on the road we got to go pick up our laundry and head to another beach we'll see you guys in a bit you ready to go well we've beach hopped at a couple of places now headed south as we head back towards argentina I think we've mentioned it, but I don't know if we've really popped in here and told you exactly what we're trying to do. One, yes, we're kind of scoping out the area for long-term planning as Brazil being a possible place to live in like 10 years. So we're looking at it through a different set of eyes as we drive through these beautiful beaches and we look at the neighborhoods and the infrastructure and all that kind of stuff. But we are also still on the lookout for whales. We have not seen whales yet. So we returned to this Gamboa Beach because it's known to be a place to see whales. Right whales. Yeah, right whales. And we spent the night here. It's beautiful, it's stunning, but Kurt was out for a short walk this morning and bumped into a biologist whose job is to ride up and down the beaches between Florinopolis and Imbatuba and look for marine wildlife. She gave us the scoop on where they've been seeing the whales. And she told us they're not coming as far north for some reason, like normal, as they were in the past. So it's not likely we would see them here at Gamboa. So we have decided to leave this campsite a day early, head on south, and try to go down closer to the area where she told us that we'd be able to see some whales. They also have a museum down there, and we might can get some more intel. So we're southbound. We're looking for places to possibly live in 10 years, but more importantly right now, we're looking for whales. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers guys!